Southwest for weekly on-the-water action. Plus, get timely freshwater and coastal fishing updates from our region. The Southwest Outdoors Report, Thursday on Fox Sports Southwest. It's week two in College Station as the homestanding Aggies host FCS powerhouse Sam Houston State. Last week, the much-anticipated return of Johnny Manziel was delayed by a half. But when the reigning Heisman Trophy winner returned, Johnny football dazzled the Aggie faithful. Live from Kyle Field, it's Texas A&M football coming up right now. Johnny Manziel came on in the second half after his first half suspension. Very efficient. Six of eight for 94 yards and three TDs. Ran six times for 19 yards. And you take a look at his career numbers, and this is just the start of his second season. He's already posting some pretty high stuff. So Manziel and the Aggies will have it first to 10 from the 19-yard line. Coming out throwing from the get-go and complete across the 20 and to the 22-yard line on the reception, Molina, and a four-yard gain on the play. Tackle made by Michael Wade, a junior from Art, Texas, and it sets up a second down and seven. Playing Bill there right back under center, as you would expect this Aggie offense to be. Really no change, and Mike Evans making a great grab there on the sideline, but no change from Cliff Kingsbury to Clarence McKinney. First and 10 at the 38. Evans again. Skips by the 40, midfield, Evans takes a tackle, knocked out of bounds. 82 receptions, 1,105 yards. His first year of college football. He goes, he's the guy that allows us to keep that pace. And the Matthews brothers anchor the offensive line on the ground this time. The Bearcat D is there to stop Molina. Third and that seven yards. Manziel chased out of the pocket. Unloads, receiver comes back, and it is Boy, I, I tell you what, that was a great yes. effort there by Desmond Fight. Wow, what a And point. I would tell you, Bill, that's a bad throw by Johnny Manziel. But he's tried. Side, number 96, defense. Talk about that aggressive defense. Look at all the orange hats near the line of scrimmage. Williams shakes and bakes. Got the first down as he dances on the far sideline. Six yards on the pickup by Williams. Jake Matthews helps spring him with a nice block. And Whistle brings a halt to play here. Looks like a procedure penalty against Texas A&M. Much anticipated appearance is Brandon Williams. And everybody wants to see what this guy can do. His lone year in Oklahoma ran for 219 yards in his freshman season. Receiver wide open and takes it to the 11-yard line before the tackle is made. South out of South Lake Carroll. It's his first reception of the season. It sets up second and three. Manziel scrambles, still on his feet, and close to the first down. Makes it a third and one now for a &M. And up the middle, Molina leans forward. Wow, what a run. Has the first down easily. Not big in stature, but extremely powerful. Manziel hands it off Molina. 11th play on the Aggie drive. And the handoff into the end zone. Touchdown, Texas A&M. Aggies are on the board with the score. A Carson, Carson, a sophomore from Texarkana, Texas, had a pair of TDs against the Rice Owls and springing them open that front line up front. Matthews and crew with EPO as well. Well, it's just really good to establish that that dominance, if you will, in the power running game. And Jerry Brown is a very good defender. Just gets carried into the end zone by Trey Carson. And that's kind of the power piece, if you will. If you look at just from a physical stature side, it, it, you know, he's, Trey Carson is the guy that looks like the bruising back. Matthews made the tackle of the quarterback, Brian Bell. Sam Houston State, a veteran team, as Bell, a senior from China Spring, Texas. Their leading rusher is Tim Flanders, who had the first carry of the ball game. And it's now a third and one, the ball on the 35 of the Bearcats. And you see Brian Bell using that experience, recognizing something in the front, and he changed the play. 
And the handoff, and it works to the 40, the 45, the 50. Flanders and into Aggie territory. Knocked out of bounds just inside the 30-yard line. And Sam Houston State with the ball. That was Hill, I beg your pardon, as Keyshawn Hill with the carry. 36 yards, Shay. Well, you see Brian uh, Bell go up to the line of scrimmage. He does change the play, recognize something in that defense. Looking at it, and then Keyshawn Hill got a lot of speed. He gets him out on the corner, and then he picks up a great block by his wide receiver, number six. You see blocking down on Howard Matthews. Oh, a visit with the Aggies president just a moment as Bell and a no gain on this play whatsoever as Golden made the tackle and sent it back down to Casey with the president of Texas A&M, R. Bowen Lofton. You announced this summer that you're going to be retiring as the Texas A&M president in January. What does this mean to you, and what's the reaction been since you've made that decision? Well, a lot of sad students have told me they are very upset. They can't get a diploma from me uh, next May or beyond, so that's been one of the reactions I've got from the students here. But uh, most of you will say thank you for what you've done, and I really appreciate that. You are credited for making the bold move to the SEC in 2011. Looking back on that decision, what has it done as a whole for Texas A&M University? I'll just look around you here. What's going on in this campus here is partially due to that. We've got the most exciting football season we've ever had. Last year, of course, was great as well, but the anticipation this year has been extraordinary. The attention our university gets, not just in Texas, but nationally, internationally, has never been greater than this right now. And I, I attribute it to the SEC move. And your last day of the president of Texas A&M University, what's going to be your favorite memory? Well, I hope the national championship we win next January. All right, well, thank you so much. Back to you, Bill. All right, thank you very much, Casey. A, a Sam Houston State touchdown as Flanders. Two outstanding runs. The first one that set up the touchdown run came out of the Wildcat look with Sincere as the quarterback, and here he is handing off to Flanders. Well, this is one of the things that makes this Bearcat offense so incredibly difficult to defend. Embrace your past, but live for now. You know, I'm as good of a pest control guy as a domino player. Did I tell you we've almost knocked out the fire population in Houston? <laughs> you play that tile and you call yourself a good domino player? Besides, in North Texas, we brought the termite population to its knees. Listen to you two, it appear the only pests left in Texas are here in my living room. Domino. ABC Home and Commercial Services. We've got Texas covered. Every coach that we spoke to yesterday, which was Coach McKinney, Coach Snyder, and Coach Sumlin, they all talked about the intensity and the focus that they have to have on this game and trying to keep the guys tapered down, if you will. On a first and ten, a toss Molina. outside, and Molina, who's a very versatile back, has bided his time here, picks up 23 yards on this play, sets up first and ten at midfield. Manziel got time here, staying in the pocket. Got all day. Going deep and incomplete inside the five-yard line. He waits for his receivers to get open, and if he can run them open, he will. More velocity. Third five. Here's Manziel. Got a block. Sheds a tackler. 35. Francis out of bounds on the Aggie sideline. That'll move to change. A 12-yard pickup will set it down to Casey Smith. In 2012, Johnny Manziel knew what to do and how to do it. But in 2013, the coaching staff is working on telling him why to do it. That should mean standing in the pocket longer. And if he needs to make a move with his feet, he'll know exactly why he needs to make that move. And on the first down play, complete inside the 20-yard line. Open, and, he, and the delivery to get him the ball quickly was perfect. Molina cuts it back, runs into his own, but dives forward close to a first down. He wants to rack up first downs. He wants third down conversions, and he wants success in the red zone. Here they are again, this time unsuccessful. It is picked off, picked off. Yeah. inside the 10-yard line, taken by Eric Fialo, a senior from Euless, Texas. He gets the interception. 
Sam Houston State saying, if we hadn't had that offsides, we'd yeah. have had our second pick. Well, they had three picks last week against Baylor, and you'll see the, the linebacker, he reads Johnny's eyes, and Johnny's trying to get the ball in to Cameron Clear, who was lined up in the slot. Big tight end, a lot of hope, a lot of good feelings about this guy, but Fiel reads the ball perfectly. Well, and Shea Walker, Casey Smith with it. Glad to have your board here on Fox College Football tonight. Ryan Bell. The play action pass is knocked away up front. Honor that Flanders has taken care of the last two years as player of the year. And this thing really turned into disaster, but they pick it up and proceed with it and get some yards out of it of Houston Baptist. Started to go up the middle with a quarterback draw and there to meet him, Texas A&M's defense says the Aggies smelled that out. They'd ask you, Coming in off that linebacker position, Bill. He is right on top of Brian Bell. That looked like a design run the entire way. Nate asked you, the former wide receiver, moved over to linebacker. That's a fantastic job. That's a great form tackle, throwing the arms out there, seeing what he's hitting. Brings Bell down. That was outstanding defense. Aggie's schedule does set up nicely. Last week, opening up the win over Rice. A four-game homestand after tonight, of course, Alabama here next, and then non-conference and old Southwest Conference foe, SMU, to complete the first four at home. And the first to 10 from the 46, and the Aggies ramble again as Texas A&M, no trouble moving the football, and 15-yard pickup. John Tell Franklin comes up with the stop, but that looked a little bit like a Sam Houston State kind of a place. So, hey, you do it to me a little bit, I'm going to do it back to you. AM picking up a first down and nice job of execution. Trey Carson back in there and he's got the ball now and hammering out another five or six yards on first down. 7 7 ball game. Vanzel, great protection, now has to dance a bit. Got time, bought it, and completes it. No. Third and six from the 37. Manziel this time. Wow, what a play right yeah. there. Sabian Holmes. Incomplete on the quick out that time. Walker thought Manziel was going to hit him right where he was. And they were not able to come up with the completion. This one is complete inside the 10. Touchdown, Texas A&M. Oh, mama, what a play. 27 yards on the TD pass to Holmes. I tell you, Sabian Holmes, one of these young receivers, only a sophomore, and really, what a, after a stellar high school career, winning a state championship with South Lake Carroll, has come here to College Station and has really impressed the coach. You see that inside receiver? He understands where he is. He recognizes a little bit of a soft zone. He sits down in that zone, and then after he catches the ball, turns on the Jets and gets it across the, the, the line for a touchdown. Just he really heads up play by the young man, and you see a lot of athleticism in this wide receiver. And Bertolette's kick is good. Manziel winning the Heisman. All the positives have certainly added up. Now, deep in their own territory from the seven on a first and ten. Thanks. Keep it on the ground this time. And Brandon Williams in the carry is stopped by Eric Thielen. Well, Brandon Williams, again, a very much anticipated start here. Everybody was hoping to get a chance to see him last week against Rice, but with that bruised foot, not able to play. Here at the end of the quarter, but certainly everybody's glad to see him on the field and very excited about him and his future here at AM. One quarter down, Manziel with the TD pass. Aggies with the lead, 14 7 over Sam Houston State. Stay with us. We'll be back at Kyle Field in just a moment. covers Texas A&M football like Fox Sports Southwest. Every week before game day, hear the latest gridiron strategies from Coach Sumlin himself on the Texas A&M football show. It's a team that has momentum. Then we're there for a post-game version that's packed with highlights, interviews, and injury reports. We made some adjustments to get the ball back. Plus, see the best parts of the game when we go no huddle to give you the Yankee game in just 60 minutes. Nobody covers Texas A&M football like Fox Sports Southwest. Did you know home appliance and and 
Major system breakdowns cost homeowners an average of $1,700 per year in repairs and replacements. American Residential Warranty can help cover those costs with home service plans starting at less than a dollar a day. Plan options include coverage for central air, heat, and ductwork. Interior electrical systems and plumbing. Major kitchen appliances. Water heaters. Washers and dryers. Garage door openers. Ceiling fans and more. Even pools and spas. American Residential Warranty replaced my dishwasher with a brand new one, and I only paid a small service fee. I woke up on a Saturday morning, and there was no hot water in the shower. So I called American Residential Warranty. They sent a repairman to fix the problem the same day. Call now. There's no obligation. But hurry if you wait until you need a home service repair. It'll be too late. Call now to get your home warranty. 1-800-966-8421. That's 1-800-966-8421. Cowboys game night tonight on Fox Sports Southwest. Welcome back. Second quarter underway. Aggies in their own territory on the ground. Brandon Williams on the carry. And now it's about third and four. Let's see if we can pick up the first down. Manziel buying time. Nice protection. Now comes out of the pocket from the goal line against his body and it is complete. There's Darrell Walker oh, going up big. How about that? What a pitch and catch Benzel to Walker for the first down out. Yeah, Bill, here's the, the thing. Here's the thing. Nobody uh, can appreciate the athleticism of Johnny Manziel until you actually face him. You see him do it on, on television or you see him do it on film and say, oh, we'll get a guy out there to do, to, to stop him from doing that. And that's not going to happen. How about Brandon Williams cutting it up in the middle there? Darrell Walker, that wide receiver, I was talking about 6'2", 185 pounds, senior out of Hillsborough. He's a power lifter in high school, but again, this gets to a little bit of controlled chaos. And, you know, that's what I call Johnny Manziel. He's not a system quarterback, but it is controlled chaos. 38-yard line. Here's Manziel. Drills it wide open at the 45-yard line. And the Aggies move the chains once again. 13-30 and counting in the first half. And on the end around, room to roam in across the 30 is Gonzalez down to the 24-yard line. And another first and 10 as we send it down to Casey Smith with Aggie basketball coach Billy Kennedy. Coach, throughout the offseason, you've talked about how excited you are to have a new team in 2013. What are you most looking forward to? Just got a lot of new guys. We've got six new guys and six returners, so we've got some balance and uh, just excited about the young talent we have to come with us this year. What were the biggest differences last season for you? Uh, just the athleticism in the, in the league. Both leagues are good. Uh, the SEC is an ultimate league. And yeah, he, he tried to get uh, Evans first and then Malcolm Kennedy. And nice little screen pass here to Molina. Tenth play of the drive, but Molina's knocked out of bounds. First and ten at the 13 now for the Aggies. Manziel chased his own 35, fires it out of bounds. Manziel 15 to 22 for 218, a touch and an INT. On the ground this time, Carson, who's got one of the touchdowns, is on the seven. Flag thrown. Free play. It's a free play. Manziel looking. Trying to escape. Powers his way. And a touchdown. Oh, wow. my. Talk about getting stronger. Manziel blows his way into the end zone on a seven-yard score. He ran about 55, 60 yards. And they're going to obviously wave that penalty off and take a look here. And here it goes, Bill, over time. He wants to throw the ball. He's trying to get rid of it. But the defender comes off late, and Johnny lowers the shoulder, gets into the end zone, and, man, you talk about that. will definitely fire you up and your teammates. Long. Oh, out, the right out. foot, excuse me. Yeah, yep. the right foot. The foot's out of bounds. And the is the runner stepped out of bounds with the ball at the one-yard line. I would beg you to just consider for a moment that you have to be right 100% of the time. Yeah. Ben Molina fights his way in for a score there. So, Ben says, thanks, Johnny. I get yeah. the TD. So, Molina with a touchdown here for the Aggies. Left side of that offensive line getting a great, great push. There you see Jermaine Ifedi. 6'5", 311-pound redshirt freshman. And we're talking to Coach McKinney. He said, you know, when he came in here last year, he was about 350. He needed to lose around 40 pounds. 
He did lose 40 pounds. Steven Jackson is just an incredible strength and conditioning coach. Uh oh, Bertillon had to wait for the snap to be put down and then cannot convert yeah. on the hiccup PAT. So uh, Taylor, who was seven of seven against Rice, it is first and ten at the 25 for the Bearcats. And a quick hitting pass to the outside is complete. You see the difference. The Aggie defense has controlled things. And as a result, they go to the air on their first two plays here. Remember, he was suspended last week for the targeting hit that uh, and the new rule that if uh, you are ejected for that targeting penalty and it's in the second half of a game you miss the rest of that obviously and then the first half of the next game so he'll return first second half, half tonight. Start, number 73 offense five yard penalty still third down 10 to go here in the half and again the Aggie defense is swarming and absolutely no chance that time for Bell to make anything happen and a loss of two on the play. Speaking of young guys, Alonzo Williams, a sophomore. How about that? That's something we didn't see a whole lot of last week against the Rice Owls, but Williams doing a fantastic job of staying in the lane and Brian Bell thinking that he had to run to pick up the first down. Nothing doing there, and he lost about five yards. So the deep man, you see number 15, Travis Labhart, the senior from Whitesboro, Texas, is north of Dallas. And the punt from Dunavant. Labhart fields at 37, got by a couple of tacklers. That's a little return. Yeah, that low liner punt was fielded well, and he almost got the ball to midfield. See what Manziel comes up with on the first down call. Drills it at midfield. 27 coming up. Bearcats just three in Aggie territory. Manziel, great protection. Passed a little bit behind the attendant receiver, Malcolm Kennedy. Well, they've got a talented bunch, but uh, we were talking yesterday. I want you, I know you want to go a little further about what they lost from last year's receiving core as Manziel takes care of business himself to move the chains inside the 40. But you lose three senior receivers like Swope and the others. Well, and no matter how talented the new bunch is, they're new. Yeah, not on this team, but Ryan Swope, Easy Wachaku, and Kendrick McNeil. Four guys that graduated last year. And the thing that was so impressive to me was that you're losing a ton of experience because each of those guys lettered all four years. So that's 12 letters you lost out of three players in that wide receiving court. Manziel on first and 10. Goes back to the air and completes this one inside the... 25 and it's Evans the it is sophomore the great from Galveston 19 yards and this is the great news about this Aggie offense and what coach McKinney and some of them were talking about number two and number 13 have a year of this offense under their belt and they're feeling more confident about where they're going a little bit what Casey said earlier it's Evans is on a pace in 15 games to surpass a guy named Fuller what he accomplished earlier in his career this one falls incomplete and he's healthy. He's able to practice this year. That's which, the other thing. Which he did not <laughs> practice at all last year. Pass is complete out of the backfield, and Williams is pushed out of bounds at the 14 of the Bearcats. Now, here we go. Third down and 10. Streaks a little bit on the line, and they come up short. It looks like offense is staying on. You see Johnny walking back out the field and to the rousing approval of the fan base. Aggies eight of nine and third down conversions and we made the point earlier about coach Sumlin saying that that is huge for him and obviously any defense is going we got to make the play on third down Willie Fritz has seen his guys unable to do so here is Holmes flag is thrown he is short oh he's still on his feet but another flag is thrown as he would have gotten the first down if the play stands and how about the, the fight in Sabian Holmes. Holding number 74 offense. Personal foul. Face mask. Defense. Those fouls offset. Suit call by Coach Sumlin to trot Bertolette out there because going into next week, you definitely want your kicker to have some confidence. And you see right here that he did not convert. And you had the mishap of the PAT. Yep. You've got to get those things ironed out before the tie comes rolling in. Into the end zone. Oh, what a complete grab. touchdown, Texas A&M. Oh, mama, what a play on a 20-yard pass. And the Aggies are on the board again. Oh. 
Texas A&M football show is now twice a week. Tune in for exclusive interviews, player features, and behind-the-scenes action as the Aggies begin their second season in the SEC. The Texas A&M football show each Thursday and Sunday. Check your local listings. The Learfield Sports Directors Cup is the officially sanctioned annual award recognizing all-around excellence in men's and women's collegiate competition. NACTA and USA Today co-founded this esteemed honor in 1993, still widely recognized as the crowning achievement in college athletics. November, Reed Arena. Texas A&M basketball tips off. The Aggies embark on their second SEC campaign. Here it goes. Got it! The men host Alabama, LSU, Arkansas, and Tennessee, plus more. The women will bring in Tennessee, Georgia, and Kentucky, among others. Pulls up. Jumper is for the It's affordable family entertainment. With season tickets for the men and women starting at just $100. Texas A&M basketball returning soon to Reed Arena. Yeah, it's a 13-point game. 17, yeah. And Sam Houston State still hanging in, and they don't care about any yardage battle. They just want to put together a drive. Here with 7.28 to go. There's Flanders at 44 yards. Now seven on this one gives him 51. Well, in the Bearcat offense going into the hurry-up mode right now. Bell hands it off. Not much happening that time. Flanders. Oh, loose football. Beg your pardon. And as Brian Bell, the quarterback. And first and ten, and flag oh. is thrown again. Aggies last week, five penalties for 51 yards in the victory over Rice, 53-31. Substitution infraction. 12 players in the formation on the defense. That's a big change for this Bearcats team and Scott Stoker, their defensive coordinator, led them to those national title games. Pass down to, and it's complete. Another nice grab, this time Daryl Walker, and he managed to walk that tightrope back to it. And Locke made the defensive play. Here's the throw from Enzel. Well, I really like the throw by Johnny because he throws it behind his receiver and he knows that the defender is looking downfield and won't be able to make that cut back. Walker comes up the huge catch, and now Molina. 32 yards on that last play, and then Molina quickly. You get two first downs before you can bat an eye. Manziel, defender in his face, dumps it off. The Bearcats finally make the play. Malcolm picks up about three yards, but instead of trying to do something just grandiose, he said, listen, three yards is a positive play on first down. I'll take it instead of, you know, me having to do it all. And I think that's one of the things that Coach Sumlin and Coach McKinney were trying to tell us yesterday is that he's getting better at understanding the offense. Yeah, as they say, understanding why we do what we do <laughs> instead of just going out and doing it. <laughs> you know, it, it, it you know he can do it. They have a tough time convincing us that there is a method to the madness, but it sure <laughs> seems to work. Into the end zone. Oh, what a crap. Touchdown, Texas A&M! Oh, mama, what a play on a 20-yard pass. And the Aggies are on the board again. Jaquay Williams. One of those freshman receivers. Jaquay Williams on the outside. He's got man coverage, which we're going to see a lot of man coverage by this Bearcat team. The 6'3", 210-pound freshman. The ball perfectly thrown. Hey, man, I didn't see it from that That was better anymore. than I thought. Yeah, wow. <laughs> There's Sincere. And, and Wildcats. on the run, Sincere on the sideline. And wrestled out of bounds, but not until he gets into Texas A&M territory, just under 3,000 yards career-wise. So gives you the idea of the versatility and the talent, but not versatile enough to get away from the Aggie defense on that play as he is wrestled to the ground. Second and 16 for the Cats here. Bell keeps it. So again, talk about the capability of this team. This one, a quick pop over the middle and gets them a first down to the 48-yard line. They're only 50 miles down the road, yeah. so. It's close. 
They approach the two minute mark. Bell tries to deliver across the middle. A flag oh, come a flying. Man. Intended receiver was Torrance Williams. Sort it out here. Pass interference, number 37 defense. But it's going to pay dividends for us later on down the road. First and 10 across the middle, wide open, touchdown Bearcats. 33 yards, Flanders on the reception, and the crowd from Sam Houston State, something to shout about. I tell you what, I, I, I'm not sure how you lose Tim Flanders. Yeah, he should be a marked yeah, man. Yeah, he's a guy you want to have a good eye on, and he it's just a simple release up front. Honeycutt bites down. Runs to the outside like he's thinking it's going to be a little pass out in the flat. Flanders runs right by him. A little bit more efficient at these days. Indeed. A soft short kick here. And Gonzalez got room to roam, got a blocker. Follows him and is pushed out of bounds at the 41 yard line. He's one of those kind of guys. Again, you see him 5'10, 165 pounds. Manziel goes to work, pardon me, and it is ruled a completion as Evans juggles. Literally picked it off the shoe tops, it appears. Scooped it off the top of his shoes. You're exactly right. Ball's a little bit underthrown. It's a long throw by Johnny, but Evans with that big body, and then he gets run into by Desmond Fight. But that's where you see some of that basketball skill, that 6'5 prowess, and that body hanging in there. The Aggies come right back on the ground and a burst up the middle. Well nice. done. Ten at the 24-yard line. And look at the speed of the offense. Carson again runs into a bit of a wall there and is stuffed shy of the 20-yard line. Tanner Brock, senior from Copper's Cove, makes the tackle for the Cats. TCU transfer. Second and six. Manziel all day or evening, if you will. Now showing you Johnny football. Flips it wide open. Oh, my. Just out of the reach of Sabian Holmes. Positive out of a play. Third and five from the 19. Well, I'd say Darrell Walker did a fine job of evading two tacklers, but was not able to get away from the third and got he took a pretty good pop there. Missed one earlier. And the Mishap on the extra point. This one is up and is good. So the Aggies will take it into the locker room with a 30 to 14 lead. You have time to shop for car insurance today? Yeah. I heard about Progressive's Name Your Price tool. I guess you can tell them how much you want to pay, and it gives you a range of options to choose from. Huh? I'm looking at it right now. Oh, yeah? Yeah. It's the guest room situation. The Name Your Price tool, making the world a little more progressive. A man. A man and his truck and a broken fence and a lost calf and the heart to search for as long as it takes, and the truck that lets him search for as long as it takes. The all-new Chevy Silverado, the most fuel-efficient V8 in a pickup. Strong for all the roads ahead. Divorce affects every part of your life. Family, home, finances. Don't let divorce take away any more than it has to. Call Cordell and Cordell, a partner men can count on. And it's just right now you want to see what adjustments can you make and how dominant can you be. Bell the quarterback, play action and incomplete. Second and 10 for the 25-yard line for Sam Houston State. And the handoff, Flanders cuts back. It's across the 32. Well, and he's a big stabilizing factor for the back seven for Coach Snyder. Oh, Again, Flanders. what a cut. And Flanders, can he bust it? 30, one man. Flanders 
and he scores! Oh, mama! The Bearcats stun this crowd. A 68-yard run as Flanders to the end zone. Uh, and that is a straight downhill running play. Again, this is a two-time Southland Conference Player of the Year. But great blocking at the point of attack. Honeycutt a little too wide as he went down to close and fill the gap. Flanders saw that. He cut right back in through the arm tackle. But it's a mind, different now, era, Archie plays, obviously. Yeah, but he yeah. played, what, three, four years? Yeah, for the Buckeyes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Evans, and they can run it pretty good. Evans here takes the reception, and it's a nine-point ball game. They haven't shown the ability to slow A&M down. No. And Texas A&M again comes back to convert. And it did. I beg your partners out of bounds. They do have this game under control. Not when the Bearcats go like the field. The other part of it is, as he completes this one, Manziel does out to the 47-yard line. Yeah, these reps that he's getting are valuable, and not that he doesn't have the experience, but again, we talk about the vast difference in game speed versus practice speed, and there you see Mike Evans again, just such a dominating receiver. 26 of 37 for 363. Manziel still scattering, dodges another, throws it out of play. And that Alabama defense next week is going to be uh, a oh, notch yeah. or two higher. So I'm going to take care of business here. And flag thrown on the intended pass to Evans as Evans tripping with Buki Sneed. And we got an interference call coming up. Uh, it's just kind of that mano a mano Sneed out there on an island. Fire to the pass. Holding See number him. 17 defense. It is first and 10 at the 25 following the flag. And Carson. Carson again. Eight yards out there, dot in the eye in that pistol formation. First and 10 from the 12. And Again, the running game and that offensive line moving some bodies. It's a good, another good power run right up the middle of, to the gut. And in comes Williams, Again. and Brandon Williams strolls into the end zone. He's going to be just a oh, little bit short. Part. Yeah, yes. talked about it. He said, look, the most unselfish four guys that we have on the team. Wow, that is great defense. Yes. Tanner Brock again. Jeez. Brandon Williams checks out. Trey Carson back in. And Carson. Gets the touchdown for Texas A&M. Yeah. Cameron Clear on that right side of the offensive line. Cedric Abrahi, Jermaine Ifedi. A lot of beef over there. 311, 295 pounds, 270 pounds, and Clear did a good job of just pushing the defense back enough. They've had 66 plays to the Bearcats, 27 from scrimmage. First and 10, Sam Houston State from the 25. And a nice two tight end front, just power football by the Bearcats, Tim Flanders. Yeah, Bill, there are eight home games on the schedule. That's the first time since 1919 that, eight, that the Aggies have played eight times at home. Certainly uh, comes along at the right time with excitement at an all-time high, possibly, with the Aggies sitting at number seven. Bell incomplete. Third and five at the 30-yard line of Sam Houston State. Bell, good protection. Can't connect with his receiver. Ball a little behind him, and Williams not able to come up with the catch. And punt coming up now. Should get good field position. Fake on the fourth and five, wow. and complete for the first down at the 41-yard line to Torrance Williams. You know, Willie Fritz is a mastermind. Pittsburgh State Gorillas is where he, he played his ball, and he likes to do this. Very engaged and involved in the special teams coaching, and Torrance Williams gets outside, and he's wide open. How about the throw? Pretty good. I mean, Jermaine Jacobs pushes him out of bounds, but it's well after the first down was picked up. If you haven't seen Sam Houston State play, yeah, you know about being the national championship game. Sincere, by the way, is running the Wildcat this time here, the quarterback spot. And Fakes the handoff, he goes nowhere, but this Sam Houston State team, you don't get to where they've been without being very well coached. And we've seen that tonight in all the different things they've done. Aggie crowd, as usual, making a racket. Bell kicks it out, Flanders. Third and five of the 47. Play action. 
Incomplete as Bell trying to connect again with Torrance Williams. Fourth down and five at the 47. Bell in trouble. Comes back, finds a man, and it's complete. Flanders. And Flanders gets the first down. Flag is thrown, which isn't a surprise on a crazy play like that. Bell's the receiver now filled for the offense. Coming off of a season last year where you didn't meet expectations that you thought you would, what are you most looking forward to in 2013 with your basketball team? I think one thing, it would have been a great year if we would have just got to the Sweet 16. And, uh, but we're going to be a lot younger team this year. If I can have a couple of my new freshmen or my junior college players play like number 13 Evans, we're going to be all right. And talking about football, I know you're a big football fan. What are you excited about to see Johnny Manziel do this year? Just be Johnny, okay? He doesn't have to be anybody else. Just be Johnny. Everybody loves what he does. He's one of the most exciting players I've ever seen. I've been watching football a long time. So I just hope that he hurries up and gets to my Cowboys after this. <laughs> And last question, Coach, the move to the SEC, what did that mean for the women's basketball program and the school as a whole? Well, we lose the rivalries, uh, Baylor, Texas, Texas Tech, and Oklahoma, but at the same time, Tennessee, Kentucky, LSU, South Carolina, it doesn't get any better than that. I think it's good for our school. We're standing on our own. We do not need anybody else's help. We can stand alone as Texas A&M, and I think we're doing well in every sport. Academics is everything is going well, so let's just keep going. SEC is very good for us. Thank you so much, Coach. Guys, back to the booth. All right, thanks very much, Gary Blair. What a job. Class hat, too. You bet. Well, the Aggies trying to score again and diving and waiting for the signal. Yes, touchdown again, Brandon Williams. It was all set up, though, by a sensational pitch and catch between Manziel and Evans of 42 yards, and then the momentum continued. Well, not how Brandon Williams probably envisioned scoring his first touchdown as an Aggie, Bill. Running back, star running back coming out of Oklahoma, transferred in, but got it on the receiving end, and you see the contribution to the team, and he's all very pleased with himself, very happy, and he should be. And Bertolet for the PAT. And you mentioned it, too, that, that catch by Evans. Oh, my. Hopefully, we have a chance to go back and take a look at that. 44-21 as the Aggies up 23 now, midway through the third. Learfield Sports Directors Cup is the officially sanctioned annual award recognizing all-around excellence in men's and women's collegiate competition. NACTA and USA Today co-founded this esteemed honor in 1993, still widely recognized as the crowning achievement in college athletics. November, Reed Arena. Texas A&M basketball tips off. The Aggies embark on their second SEC campaign. Here it goes. Got it! The men host Alabama, LSU, Arkansas, and Tennessee, plus more. The women will bring in Tennessee, Georgia, and Kentucky, among others. Pulls up. Jumper is for the It's affordable family entertainment. With season tickets for the men and women starting at just $100. Texas A&M basketball returning soon to Reed Arena. The Texas A&M football show is now twice a week. Tune in for exclusive interviews, player features, and behind-the-scenes action as the Aggies begin their second season in the SEC. The Texas A&M football show each Thursday and Sunday. Check your local listings. So, sophomore just having uh, he's, a huge night. And he's just dominating. And, 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 it's, and it's scary to think about how good he can be. Yeah. Right. 
just encouraging to think about it. Maybe he's just really, he's a fantastic athlete and a really, really polished wide receiver. Now trying to go coast to coast, and they do on the long pass completion to Torrance Williams. As Williams goes 75 yards, it looked like it might get picked off, but Jacobs lost the battle. I'd say Tremaine wow. Jacobs played it perfectly. You'll see he's running stride for stride with Williams. Looks at it, he does a great job of looking back to locate the ball, and it, he's a fingernail away from flicking that ball out of the hands of Williams, but... What a give Williams, Yeah, give Williams a lot of credit for coming up, concentrating, and coming up with that grab. They played a well, just a huge amount of games, and now they're setting up to do something a little bit different here on the kick. Yep, on onside. Side. How about that? Nicely done by the Aggies. Montana Brock. Yeah. Looks like he might have jarred the ball loose, or well, possibly he just a little. He went a little too fast. Unless Coach Schneider can coach these guys up and say you've got to stay on your coverage. All right, thanks, Casey. And now here is Molina, and Molina. Rolls to the 37 yard line at the 37. Manzel, look at this. Wide. Oh, I was going to say open a touchdown, but Malcolm just Kennedy. reaching. Malcolm Kennedy couldn't quite come up with it. Quicker, and that's what caused the. Uh the low throw, and how about the strength of Molina? Flag is thrown as Molina sheds tacklers, goes to the 15, and down inside to near the 10-yard line. <laughs> 25 yards on the play. We'll see if it stands. Personal foul, face mask, defense. Half the distance to the goal from the end of the run, first down. Yeah, you mentioned uh, Jake Spavitod. He's a, a young guy that I know pretty well. Coach, it's just incredible that he has had exposure and input into the guys' careers. Here's Manziel. Scampers for the TD. Aggies. Six-yard run for Johnny Manziel as he gets the touchdown. Almost looked like he was... Getting a little bit impatient with the offense. And again, after that big run by Molina in the walk-off, he's like, all right, enough of this. <laughs> he looked for the receivers. He gave them a chance. Weren't able to get there. And he said, look, I can do this on my own. And felt like he took a hit a little bit deep in the end zone. But getting his confidence back, he had you saw the muffed hold on the extra point try and then the missed field goal. But he did respond well as he came back. And <laughs> You know, Bill, this game last year, which was played in late November, early November, excuse me, late in the season, but it was a 47-28 Aggie win. Aggies dominated first half. Deflected, intercepted. Aggies a chance to take it to the house, and they do! Touchdown of 30 yards on the INT, and Texas A&M gets a quick six. Interception. Walking out on the inside receiver, and you see the deflection there was 48, Darren Claiborne. One of those guys that Coach Schneider talked about. Coach in Mule's history. On the ground this time. Bell hands it off, and a nice job by Howard Matthews. On the ground, forging ahead, wow. and Flanders got a hard-earned first down in the second half. And then finally, when they took Manziel out, they really thought it wasn't fair to throw Hill in for the last few minutes. Wow. And another pick. Yes, it's fixed. Didn't know if he stayed in bounds. Yeah, Jason Everett, though, that was an outstanding play. Ryan Bell got fooled by the Aggie secondary. He thinks that he has his receiver, and that little touch pass that he threw over the top again, he did not account. And you see Everett come off. His receiver, he had man coverage, but Everett comes off his receiver playing the eyes of the quarterback, and that's the leadership that you're talking about when you get a guy like DeShazer in here who can recognize those types of plays, go out there and make a big play for your team. Hill is 6'1", 215, true freshman, South Lake Carroll there in the Dallas suburbs, and, of course, the son of one-time pitcher, and he's speaking of pitching. He throws a strike 
Jaquay Williams. Williams oh, my. already made a spectacular catch for a TD. Oh. How about that from Kenny Hill? Yeah, I don't, I, I don't, I'd love to see this again. You saw Johnny go down and congratulate Jaquay on that touchdown. Take a look at this grass. Oh, oh, how mama. nice is that? <laughs> All right. And deep in the playoffs this last year and uh, high expectations for him. This pass here sliding in. Touchdown, Texas A&M. Why not? He may not be getting the number of reps that Coach Sumlin and Coach Spavital wanted to get, but Travis Labhart. Kenny Hill's going two yeah. plays to score. Uh, maybe I ought to play some more. Yeah. <laughs> I think I like this quarterback. I think I like being a quarterback. All oh, smiles here. What a catch, huh? That's Labhart. a great throw. You know, you, you're throwing that ball. It is a very catchable ball. It's been taken away from the defense. They should just let all that grab and go on in the secondary. Now you got to give those guys a break once in a while. So defense can Oh, Flanders. Oh, it looked like he had an angle. <laughs> Sam Houston State, a 68-yard score and a 75-yard score, but that's nothing compared to the Aggies' consistent and the onslaught here at Kyle Field. 65-28. Looks like Manziel's through for the night. What a night, though. 426 yards passing, three TDs, and scored one on the ground as So as we go to the fourth quarter, Bill Land, Shea Walker, and Casey Smith with you here as Kevin Sumlin and the Aggies let it go in that third quarter. 226 yards of offense, 35 points. Sam Houston State had 194 yards of offense, primarily on two long scoring plays. As we start the fourth, passes incomplete. Humidity sapping them just a little bit right now. What you have to do from that safety spot, and it's making sure open field tackles. As Alabama idle this week, will be here next Saturday. Good to see him hand the ball off so he can stay in the game a little longer. <laughs> yeah, that's right. And again, back Roselle as Kilo makes the tackle. But, you know, so now to see him run a couple plays, now looks like he's going to get a chance to pass the ball and just getting him some an opportunity to run the offense. You know, and I, and I, if I'm Jake Spavitol, I'm thinking, all right, I'd like to see maybe a seven, eight, nine, ten play drive if, if at all possible. Picks up 16 yards on that play. Yeah, you want to see him get the feel and a little rhythm of the offense. That was a Kendrick Williams. And now pass to Dozell. So it's uh, it, it, it's a big deal, but Kenny Hill looking like he's heir apparent. Of course, don't forget about Matt Jokel yeah. in the mix, but Kenny Hill being the freshman, the true freshman, I mean, it looks like that's the future of where the quarterback position is going to be. Fumble on the play. But it's good to have him there and getting knocking a little bit of the rust off and getting more than a half a play. Whataburger, what a player. Try one of Whataburger's all-time favorites, 24 hours a day. As we've hit the fourth quarter, all of a sudden, it's not faster, faster, faster. I want to make sure that they execute, too, for the youngsters. And we've got mainly, I think, as we're checking here, backup players both sides. Bad experience for them. They turn it over on downs. We'll be back with Sam Houston State taking the field offensively in just a moment. At Wingstop, we're the wing experts with 10 mouth-watering flavors. And now we're introducing new mango habanero wings. Sweet and so spicy, the mango flavor kisses you right on the lips. But then the spicy habanero kicks you in the taste buds. Mmm. Hurts so good. Wingstop's new mango habanero wings. Here now, but not forever. Wingstop, the wing experts. If you had a dollar for every dollar car insurance companies say they'll save
father. Well, just a dominating performance by a dominating receiver, and it's really good to see him healthy. On the ground, this time for Sam Houston, his father. Outstanding player at SMU back in the Southwest Conference days, John Cooney Jr. Uh, I think it was a marquee watershed game for this team last year and something that they can continue to build on. King threw a bullet out to his wide receiver. Pride ourselves in not messing up names, so we, especially these guys that haven't seen any action, they come in, but Cheyenne Motlaw, nice reception there on that play from King. King hands off to Hicks. And Stephen Hicks, redshirt freshman from Mesquite out of Poteet High School. Out on the line next week, there's, it's still the first conference game of the season, and it's still early September. There's so much more football. Who knows what will end up being the key game. Drama of college football week to week is hard to match. Fourth down and one, and Sam Houston State will go for it. Well, I don't Aggies know. look like they held. We'll see. They may have to measure, but maybe not. That was Hicks. Pretty clear. Denied. He didn't get it. Yeah. Nice job by the Aggie backup yeah. defenders as Jay Arnold, freshman from Rockwall, Texas, leading the charge on there. The Aggies tonight in a, a special moment uh, are establishing a, a sticker to go on the helmet to always remember the uh, outstanding young man who tragically lost his life in a car accident, Polo Manukayunu, just a couple of months ago. And it's really special what they've done with to remember Polo here. Well, and they did, and, and then for those, for them to uh, make that helmet sticker and kind of the uh, the tribal thing that that Polo, you know, appreciated it was, and try, try to be as good of a representative for him as possible. And and this last Tuesday, as all Aggies know, first Monday of every month is Silver Taps, and Polo's family was here, and there was a lot of teammates out there as well that went to honor him. And in true Aggie tradition, he's you know he's a part of the family, and Coach Sumlin said as much. And it's just a, it's a very tragic accident, very very uh, very tough loss for this team. And yeah, he was definitely a guy that was going to contribute this year, but you know it's just a guy that's gone way too early. Yeah, thought so highly of by so many people around here. 27 uh, points. Such a great young man. Yeah, and actually, I would just say that is for me. It is one of the high points that Johnny Manziel delivered in his Heisman speech. We got 3:26 remaining in the game. 65-28. Sam Houston State, another possession, and Wilson runs the football. King still the quarterback. Again, Sam Houston on the ground. Again, Texas A&M said, not against this bunch. Boy, four very successful years at Houston. Picking the three bowls. His background just sets him up perfectly. 68-45 is the final. Kevin Sumlin gets congratulations from Willie Fritz as the Aggies go to 2-0 and, oh and set the stage for a huge SEC opener with the Alabama Crimson Tide next Saturday. If it's high school football, it's on Fox Sports Southwest. We're your home for comprehensive coverage every 